Okay guys, so here I am developing this AI search feature. We're using Beautiful Soup, we're using requests, and we're using Azure. And here is some data on Azure. If you guys are interested on setting that up, it's basically just typing Bing search. Bing search version seven. And that's pretty much it. You need to uh, set up your basic resource group and your subscription and you're good to go. It is 100% free, but it is an amazing tool for AI web search. So it has this following parameters that I find particularly very interesting. For example, we have fetch the web page content. It retrieves the full content of the web page and extracts the text. This and then we have, which is which can be very useful uh, with AI for trading applications or management applications. So summarize the text, number of sentences. So with this function, it implements a basic extractive extractive summarization algorithm. It tokenizes the text, removes stop words, calculates word frequencies, scores sentences based on the frequency of the keywords, and then selects the top scoring sentences to a form summary. So there is a science behind uh, AI search. It is not just getting the data from the website and calling it a day. There are various techniques that can be used and yield different results. So summarize results functions now fetches the full content of each web page and generates a summary using our new summarization function. So there's a new summarization function which is probably very useful for AI search because it translates the HTML, the probably irrelevant information from the website and it converts it into a format that might add more value. This approach should provide more comprehensive and accurate summaries of the web pages. However, please note, fetching and processing full web page content will significantly increase the routine of the script some websites may block or rate limit requests, so you might want to add error handling. Potential implementation delays between requests, the quality of summaries can vary depending on the structure and content of the web page. So yeah, we are basically getting data from the wild and we are processing it in a textual basis. But since it's the complete open world, we can obtain different data types that aren't unexpected, so errors can happen. So I'm going to test this script that I've been working on on this artifact on Claude. I highly recommend Claude. It is amazing. So let's see how it works. So as of now, the reason why I'm iterating between different implementations of this AI search script is because the summaries are getting cut out. And as you can see, in this example, AI trading software encompasses everything from hands-off robo-advisors to new aggregation and everyone's doing it. These tools fall into four categories, robo-advisors, research automation, alert assistance, alert execution, beginners only need the first, everyone else needs one of each. So there's, there's some valuable information there, even though it's summarized in a short way, but sometimes it cuts out valuable data. For example here, let's dive straight into our list of the best AI bots for trading in 2024. Dash to trade overall, best AI trading bot for 2024. Learn to trade, top crypto trading bot with 79% win rate. Percept Trader AI, popular AI powered grid trading system for detecting high potential trading opportunities. There's 10 items on that list. We only get less than five. So that's not cool. So as you can see, I'm iterating over this to make it so the summaries are a little bit longer. So let's see on our new implementation how it works. On a side note, Apple intelligence, AI for the rest of us. So Apple is basically starting to use AI. They're starting to catch up. And as you guys can see, they started to use the data they already have, leveraging all that ecosystem they already built. And they basically help you write notes, 
Siri is now actually working, which was pretty much not very useful in the past. Uh, delightful images created just for you. Uh, yeah, they added image generation and that's it. And create expensive images, expressive images, unique Genmoji and custom memory movies. So yeah, you can create custom memory movies, which is pretty okay, I guess. It's, it's useful. It's something we probably need. Um, and yeah, pretty much that's, that's what they did. The start of new era for Siri. And yeah, Siri is starting to actually work. But they call it a new era, but whatever. Uh, discover an even more capable integrated personal Siri, which now Siri is using a RAG, a retrieval augmented generative uh, database that allows her to use the data that's already in the operating system. So you can actually use basically all the information you already have there and basically have a conversation with it and use it in different useful ways, which is something that should have been done years ago. Great powers comes with great privacy. They are doubling down on their privacy, even though many applications are saying that they are still uh, collecting private data that's even outside of the application, which is an interesting move on Apple to say this. Used only for your request, verifiable privacy promise, which is, is good, I guess. That's good that they're trying to be more private. Even though most applications can still access all your operating system and get all your data and sell it on the dark web, which sucks. So ChatGPT seamlessly integrated. So they're integrating ChatGPT, which is good, but I mean, why don't they use their own AI? Why don't they create a good AI? Like, Mistral, like a lot of big companies like Liquid Form and so many AI companies that are popping out and Apple just can't create their own AI. It's kind of weird. Anyway, new possibilities for your favorite apps. Apple intelligence is compatible with disk devices. <laughs> Good. So even some older phones are going to be able to have Apple intelligence, which is nice. Okay guys, so back to my AI search project. Here we have the result of this updated um, code that I've been working on today. Don't get very excited. The API key was revoked already, so heads up. So here is the summaries of my search. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this again so you guys can take a look at it and see for yourself okay so we're using NLTK it uses natural language processing and best AI trade bots here we go it is performing AI it is performing web search and as you can see it is coming up with summaries and let's take a look at the summaries that it comes up with because this is going to be fed into the AI and as you can see there's a lot of data there a lot of stuff is irrelevant a lot of stuff is not necessary we just need to get the proper data but we're still gonna have to filter it with AI because it's unordered data unstructured that comes from the web that's designed for humans to actually read so here we are so how to buy stocks online when to buy and sell stocks there's a lot of irrelevant information here that has nothing to do it's comparing stock exchanges which is totally useless because i asked for a best ai trade bots not best stock exchanges which that's not relevant okay so So here's some kind of Cloudflare Ray ID found at the bottom of this page. So it's probably some security measure. 
So, seven best AI trading systems software and bots for stocks. So, best AI trading system software and bots for stocks 2024. So, that's not useful. Wall Street Zen. Not a very good summary of what's on the website. So, Stock market beginners, how to buy stocks online, when to buy and sell stocks, what makes stocks go up and down. That sucks, that's not useful. So, nine best platforms for swing trading. No, that's not useful. So yeah, that's totally irrelevant to my search. So I'm gonna go back and use my previews. I'm gonna iterate on this, let's see what happens. So, I am coding with the power of AI. It is way better than coding hand by hand. Um, so right now the summarize feature, so right now the summarize feature isn't relevant or useful for the previous or, the, or useful, the previous version was way better because it contained the summary of the website. Now there's a lot of irrelevant data coming in. So let's see what it comes up with. So right now it's using this. Key changes in this version. NLTK functions now explicitly checks for and downloads. Stop words. Yeah, we had to download NLTK. Run the script the first time you run it. It should see messages about downloading NLTK resources. Blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that worked. That's great. This thing is amazing. It saves so much time in development. It's like... You can actually be 10 times more productive, which is great. So as you guys know, when you use this stuff, it always freezes. So that's fantastic. Now it's freezed when we're using it. 